Okay, everybody, thanks for joining us. We're going to do a three-round Vikings mock draft, and we've got Tyler Fornis here. He's the managing editor of the Vikings Wire to help us out. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start this mock draft with Carolina. And uh, Tyler, when it hits Minnesota, you tell us who they'll pick. Sounds good. All right. Wow. There we go. Zip all the way to the all the way to the Vikings. Um, let's see. Jordan Addison just went. If in case you're looking at wide receiver there, uh, Brian Branch. Players just went. Here's your available players. There's Quentin Johnston. I know you mentioned him earlier. Who is it that you would be thinking about here at pick 23? So I'm going to try to approach this like the I believe the Vikings will approach it. And it's really tough because um, I spoke about uh, this with Pro Football Network's Arif Hassan, who hosts uh, the Norse Code uh, Minnesota Vikings podcast. And he used to write an article breaking down the different thresholds the Vikings had for each position under Rick Spielman. With this being the second year of the Quasi Dopo Mensa era and the first year where he's had like a full draft cycle to be able to implement everything that he wants and not have to fully use Rick Spielman's scouting staff, like I, we really don't know what he's going to do and how much he prioritizes. But I'll, I'll say this if the board shaped up like this and they're not trading back, I think it's going to be Quentin Johnson with a bullet just because of the upside he has, the explosive athletic profile if his explosion metrics are really good and they have a really big need at the wide receiver position i'm not convinced kalijah Kansi will be on their board because of the size but i do think moving him uh to like a five technique in this defense like an edge rusher and then putting him inside on pass rush downs has some merit because he won't be washed out as much in run defense um i'm completely out on lucas van ness in the first round i just don't see it um to me, yeah, like people are like, oh, he's a bull in a china shop. He generates power. Well, when all you can do is run at a brick wall and sometimes you bust through like the Kool-Aid man, that doesn't make you a great prospect in my eyes. I would take late second round, but that's kind of it. And Forbes um, is built like Gumby. Like he's 166 <laughs> pounds. He's a talented football player. But it's really difficult for me to take that kind of outlier in the first round. And even though he's he's got a lot going for him, that's still really tough. So is Quentin Johnston, he's the uh, rush to the mic pick here? If you can't work out a trade, he's the rush to the mic pick. Absolutely. All right. I like that. Well, for this purpose, we'll go ahead and take him. And uh, the Vikings do not have that second round pick due to the Hawkinson trade. So uh, that brings us to pick number 87 in the third round. What are you targeting here? Best player available? Is there a position that you're looking at? Maybe a, a running back? Uh, or is it too early for that? What are, what are you thinking here, Tyler? Uh, Let's let me take know a look at the cornerback room. Um, okay. I am not 100% sold that uh, the Vikings will prioritize running back until Dalvin Cook is gone. Um, okay. I'm, I'm really disappointed I don't see my guy in here, and that is South Carolina's Darius Rush. That's wow. kind of been my target at 87. He he made the All-Forno team just a tremendous football player. Um, I think he could he has a potentially higher ceiling than his teammate Cam Smith. Um, just an awesome football player with incredible recovery skills. You just got to teach him not to lose early in the rep. Um, but kind of taking a look at the cornerback room, Trey Hodges Tomlinson is interesting. If that dude was six feet tall with normal wingspan, he's going in the first round. Um, yeah. But he's 5'7 and a quarter, 175 pounds, and he's got like 29 inch arms. That you see that hurt him on tape, even with all the good plays. You can see quarterbacks layering the ball over him in zone coverage. And to me, that's too big of a worry. I, I could maybe see him in the slot, but I think that they're going to want uh, somebody a little more diverse. Um, let's go back to the full board because like, I just don't see a cornerback that they might be willing to take right here. Garrett Williams is interesting, but the torn ACL. Kobe Turner has as the merit. I'm out on Tanner McKee, uh, at least not here. He's my number 10 quarter, quarterback in this class. DeMarvian Overshone has a lot of potential, and I think pairing him with Brian Asamoa has a lot of merit because they're just both incredibly quick and explosive modern-day style linebackers. Um, but the Brian Flores defense likes their linebackers to be able to stack and shed, and I – I don't think I can draft him because I, I just don't think he can do that. Um, A.T. Perry, if they don't go wide receiver, is a great move here. 
there, let's stop here for a second. Let's go back up a little bit because there's one guy I want to touch on who I think um, – oh, you, you passed him. Carl Brooks, the Bowling Green Edge. Um, I think he'd be more of a five-tech. I think they would prefer to get a nose tackle, but I just don't see any kind of value here. Broderick Martin and Jared Clark maybe in like round five, round six. But I'm not very high on Jared Clark. I do like Broderick Martin. Um I think Carl Brooks might be the play here based on kind of what we're seeing the board as they would like to get corner, but they don't need to because the guy that they're drafting is probably going to be your cornerback five this year. And they showed last year, they weren't necessarily drafting for 2022. They were drafting for the future. And I think this regime is going to continue to do that. Carl Brooks is an amazing pass rusher needs to learn how to play the run, but they were asking him to play like a true edge, not even a five tech at Bowling Green. And he's got some bend for a big boy. Um, he was far and away the biggest combine snub. I love what he brings to the table and the, the ability to play inside and outside, I think is something Brian Flores will really appreciate. Um, this could be his like Trey flowers type player where you just utilize him a little bit of everywhere. Uh, I think he's a better athlete than Trey flowers and I'd go Carl Brooks. Um, the one thing that would deter me from this is the Vikings under Quasi have not drafted a group of five players. Um, I don't know if that's going to continue to be a trend, but it is something that the uh, Cleveland Browns have been doing where they kind of stay away from group of five guys. They prioritize the bigger schools. And Quasey came from Cleveland. Andrew Berry is, is his mentor. So I want more of a sample size before I really commit to that. But to me, Carl Brooks is the best play here. All right, Carl Brooks it is. And uh, I mean, you, that's some excellent, outstanding uh, information and analysis Vikings fans. So uh, make sure that you go back and watch that again, because that's solid. Uh, it looks like Darius rush would have been the pick here. If he was available, the corner out of South Carolina. Um, and you mentioned AT Perry as well as a receiver. If that's not the target in the first round, Carl Brooks here, will go with him as your pick. And AT can... Perry to me is a discount version of Quentin Johnson. You're getting a lot of the same things, but to me, there's more of a risk. Um, like, I, I need to see more from Perry. I was honestly a little underwhelmed with his negatives, but his positives are very nice. And just the, he's a great third round pick because if he busts, he, it's totally worth taking that shot because he does have a really nice upside. Yeah. Well, we're looking at the grades here from our draft. And again, only two picks because of the, the non second pick or not the no second round pick. Uh, they didn't like your Carl Brooks pick, but you know, it's probably, it's just the algorithm speaking there. Um, but, uh, they, they really liked the, the Quentin Johnston pick. And I think that would be a good fit for Minnesota. If, if it's Johnston and Zay flowers and Jordan Addison are, are all there, Tyler, who would you still take Johnston? Yeah. Johnston is my number three overall player in the class. He's also my number one oh, receiver. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah, I, I I absolutely love Johnson. I'm willing to bet that a receivers coach with a year can teach him enough nuance for him to truly be great. Um, I, I don't think he needs to learn that much because his plus traits are so good. He just needs to learn a little bit. Like Jordan Addison is what um, is as being referred to like in my circles. He's a podcaster. He is a, just a tiny individual, and like he's gonna get bullied. You you play him in press coverage, he's just yeah. going to get destroyed because he has no core strength. I don't think he's quite the savvy route runner that the Slim Reaper Devonta Smith was, and that's the reason why Smith has been so good. Plus, now he has easier coverage with AJ Brown on the other side. Like I, I worry about Addison Flowers. I I really like Flowers, but I I don't know how the Vikings will contextualize Flowers, and to me, that's that's something that I'm plus I think flowers will be gone. I really do. Yeah. I think, he, I think he's a new England Patriot. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, Boston awesome college it's right there. Or if he's a San Diego Charger, Los Angeles charger. <laughs> I just, I watched the 2004 draft with uh, the Eli Manning, <laughs> Philip Rivers thing. San Diego can bury into my head. I always say San Diego too. Me too. You can't escape it. All right. Well, hey, that that does it for our mock draft here for the Vikings. And uh, I want to thank you for for watching, tuning in. And what are your thoughts on on his on Tyler's picks? What would you have done differently? Let us know in the comments. 
And um, we appreciate your support. Please do us a favor. If you like the show, consider subscribing and leave us a comment. As I mentioned, that stuff really does help out our channel. So make sure that you ch also check out our separate video that we did with Tyler for the Vikings uh, draft preview. And um, check out any other videos that we may have. If you're not a Vikings fan, we may have your team. If we don't, we'll get to it soon. So thanks so much. Uh, your entertainment is our passion. We'll see you next time when we talk about the Buffalo Bills. All right. Thanks, Tyler. Thanks, Tyler. Absolutely, guys. Thank you. All right. <laughs>